All right. So shout out to Trump War Room uh, for dropping this tweet. Uh, on the left, we have Kamala Harris recording an interview on the X podcast. You can you can see that word for yourself right there. I'm not going to say that on this platform. Call her daddy. Right. On the right side, we have hurricane victims pleading with their government to help after losing their loved ones, their homes and their livelihoods. That tells you all you need to know about Kamala's priorities. Haven't we been saying this? We're going to get right into this. Before we get into this, I just want to say shout out to the King Squad. You guys are the bomb.com. Welcome to the channel if you guys are new here. Okay, welcome to the King Squad. This is the best reaction channel on YouTube. And be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Share these videos. I appreciate each and every each and every single one of you guys, okay? Shout out to the King Squad, the King Squad family, the King Squad elites. We're all tapping in. I see you guys tapping in. You guys are the bomb.com. We're all awesome. You guys are awesome. And don't let anybody tell you any different, all right? And uh, I hope everybody's doing all right. All right. It's, and, and stay prayed up, stay proactive, all that beautiful stuff and uh, stay healthy out here. So we're going to get right into this and let's go. I will be giving my commentary periodically throughout the video, more so in the back end. Daddy gang to put it in. Um, <laughs> oh, that's a way to start. All right. <laughs> Daddy gang to put it in um, our TikTok terms. Um, I have seen girls on the street walk up to men and be like, do you know where a tampon goes? Do you know how many tampons we use? Do you even know how, like, do you know what a X or Y or Z is of a part of our, and they don't know the answer. I was the first vice president or president to ever in office uh, go to a reproductive health care clinic. Daddy gang. What is this? A girlfriend reunion? What, what, what is this? What is this hogwash? <laughs> Oh my gosh, this is equivalent to uh, Kamala Harris like getting on The View. Yeah, girl, how are you doing? Mm-hmm, I'm doing good. Really? How's the kids? They're good. Hey, what about the country that's on fire? <laughs> I mean, I mean, I'm I'm calm, but seriously, what what about what about us? Hello, hi, yes, the people. Okay, let's get into this video on the right. The hurricane victims pleading with the government to help after losing their loved ones. Let's go. People have lost everything. People have lost everything. There's nothing here. We're eight days, nine days post hurricane, and that was the first FEMA drop I've seen here in the Swannanoa area. I haven't seen a FEMA agent yet. Uh, this is all local volunteers, volunteers from abroad, as far as Washington State, are coming out here to help and pick up the slack that's been left behind from our government. You know, and President Trump, he's not even in office, but yet he's still getting a Starlink. He's doing his best. He's shaking all the trees. If we're talking about federal assistance, I didn't see my first FEMA truck until, what is today, Saturday? I didn't see my first FEMA truck until Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. And all I saw was a FEMA truck with a satellite on it, parked in a corner, underneath some shade trees, in the parking lot, with no signage, no information. I don't know why they're there. The word from the people that we talk to, and they say, when we say, who else has been here? Can we help? Uh, maybe we can work together. They're like, we, you're the first ones, or the only other people that have helped us is another private, you know, citizens that are just basically our neighbors or our friends trying to help us. They hadn't seen anyone from the federal government yet. When our vice president talks on the TV about $750 for FEMA, uh, yeah, that's not good. The only information that I've gotten about FEMA actions on the ground has been an attempt to sort of stop the, uh, some of the volunteer efforts, especially, you know, there's a medical support trailer that's here by volunteers. They have doctors and registered nurses. They're all licensed doctors and registered nurses. They were told they couldn't do what they were doing because it was not being federally controlled or something along those lines. I've seen one helo come in and I was told that was FEMA and that was it. Today was the first FEMA delivery that I've seen or I've heard of in the entire region. Wow. Wow. Just wow. Uh, prayers out to the families that have, you know, uh, have been severely impacted. I'm going to word it like that. Severely impacted by these hurricanes. Um, you know, prayers out to those families. Prayers out to everybody. Prayers out to all of us. OK, you guys, everybody. OK, because um, uh, these are definitely just interesting times and it's an election year. OK, there's going to be a bunch of theatrics and problems all over the place and things that are being highlighted. And all kinds of things to sway people's votes and, and perception uh, perspectives and all that kind of stuff. Um, so there's definitely a lot going on right now. Uh, definitely a time to stay vigilant, stay focused, you know, uh, uh, 
keep stacking up, keep protecting yourselves, uh, you know, doing your best to stack resources, all that kind of stuff. That's, that's, that's how my mind thinks when seeing all this kind of stuff. Um, cause it definitely is a trying time for many, uh, many individuals. So here we have the call me daddy. Well, call. call okay. I apologize. <laughs> call her daddy podcast. I, <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I apologize. I really thought that was the name of the podcast. I'm going to leave this in here, okay, because this is completely authentic. But uh, no, I really did think that's what the name of the podcast was. I thought it was the Call Me Daddy podcast. No, it's Call Her Daddy podcast. I told you guys, sometimes I have my moments where I got a million things in my mind. But yeah, Call Her Daddy podcast. All right. Yeah. Uh, no. But um, let's get into this and let's go. At a rally in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. former President <laughs> Trump recently told women, you will be protected and I will be your protector. What do you make of that? So he who, when he was president, hand selected three members of the United States Supreme Court with the intention that they would undo the protections of Roe v. Wade. And they did just as he intended. And there are now 20 states with Trump abortion bans including bans that make no exception for rape or incest, which we just discussed, which means that you're telling a survivor of a crime of a violation to their body, they don't have a right to make a decision about what happens to their body next, which is immoral. So this is the same guy that is now saying that? Wait, 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 wait. It just dawned on me. Since when do Democrats care about morality? Anyways, let's, let's get back into the video. This is the same guy who said that women should be punished oh, for having- And another thing, I, I'm sorry, the, the BS here is outrageous and achoo, I'm allergic to BS. So, uh, Tim Waltz literally just did a whole uh, news session where he was stating that he agrees with um, deleting kids all the way into the ninth, what is it, like the ninth month or something like that? I'm like, whoa, whoa, you, you might. And then they're saying, no, that that's not bad. It's not even a living thing yet. I'm like, what? Do, do you not know how the body works? I mean, like, what in the world? But I digress. Let's get back into the clip. Yeah. Comment down below what you guys think about that. Having abortions. This is the same guy who uses the kind of language he does to describe women. So. Yeah, there you go. I do want to focus on abortion for a moment because two years ago, Roe v. Wade was overturned and women mm -hmm. lost their constitutional right to an abortion. I put out an episode about it. I flew to North Carolina. Yeah. I went to a preferred women's health center. I met with women that mm -hmm. were getting screamed at and chanted at and called baby killers. And it was the most eye-opening experience I've yeah. ever had because I am a privileged white woman that lives in Los Angeles. And I am so aware of that. Um, I understand that a lot of the younger generation sees things online mm -hmm. and it's like, what is right? What is wrong? What is real? What is not? Can you explain and talk about what is actually happening to abortion access right now in this country. Yeah. So again, I thank you for what you've been doing and at the earliest stage of this and following the stories. So, you know, on public policy, I often tell my team, look, I don't want to hear about public policy is a fancy kind of speech or, or, or paper tell me how it'll affect a real person. So let's talk about how it affects a real person. The majority of women who receive abortion care are mothers. So if she's in a state, and by the way, every state in the South, except for Virginia, has an abortion ban, okay? Um, so imagine she's in a state with an abortion ban. One out of three women are, by the way, in our country. And she's a mom. So she's gonna have to figure out, one, God help her if she has affordable childcare. God help her if she has paid leave. And then she's gonna have to go to the airport, stand in a TSA line, sit on a plane next to a perfect stranger to go to a city where she's never been to receive the care she needs 
she's going to probably have to get right back on that plane because she's got those kids. Her best friend's probably not with her because that's who's taking care of the kids. To get back in that TSA line, to get back on a plane, to go home. And that's all if they can even afford the plane ticket or the bus ticket. Exactly. Exactly. Because when Ro- This is absolutely ridiculous. Um, I just have to say that because it's just like it's personally it's it's actually kind of frustrating. Like not even kind of. I'm I'm really just, you know, watering it down, but it's it's very frustrating. Um just just the fact that Kamala Harris is even running to me because like people are literally suffering. And then you're like having a you know, a tea party and discussing deleting kids. And, and you know why deleting kids is so important. And I'm like, uh, we're literally on the brink of World War Three, Okay. Like, if we don't like figure this thing out, we're a, a lot of people will be deleted. And uh, people are literally losing everything right now. Hurricanes. And this, I, I see these hurricanes as, you know, how do I say this? How do I word this? Uh, it's really just an, an excellent way to see where Kamala Harris's priorities are. Okay. I'm just going to say it like that. All right. You know, I'm not saying it's an excellent situation. It's a very, uh, you know, unfortunate situation. It's a very sad situation. Um, a very critical situation, but you know, really looking at it and analyzing it, you're able to see that, you know, this chick right here is not really all the way on earth. Not, not this, not this person, but, uh, yeah, well, her too, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, as far as Kamala Harris goes, I'm like, do you not see the people struggling? Do you not see the economy? Do you not see people out here, you know, unable to support their kids, their families, you know, uh, support themselves. People want to be able to retire. People want to have babies. Okay. People want to, you know, create generational wealth and leave a legacy and all that kind of stuff. And you're, you're, you're kind of just you're torpedoing that like, and kaboom explode. You know, that's kind of what she's doing like a lot, kind of like a lot, like a lot, a lot. <laughs> and, uh, I just, I just am really disgusted by how calm and, you know, how, just unfazed she is it's like it's like it's not even happening like if i didn't see these clips and i didn't really pay attention and do the research myself i would think you know what kamala harris is a good person and you know i can actually see her being the president and this this is if i was still brainwashed on the democratic plantation but uh you know, the more I dig into these clips and the more I listen to the facts and I uh, look at the facts and I and I see the actual evidence i'm like what in the world Just how? How can you sit here and ignore what's going on? You know, this person is not fit to lead. And the people that are still going to vote for her, you know, God bless those people. Because I I guess you can't save them all. But uh, it's really disgusting because we're seeing the suffering. We're seeing the people that are struggling. You know, people are experiencing this firsthand. And she's just like, do do do, sunshine and dandelions. It's a beautiful day in Candyland. You know, would you be my neighbor? <laughs> if whoever remembers Mr. Rogers. But uh, whatever he said. Anyways, let's get back into the video. And to get back on a plane to go home. And that's all if they can even afford exactly. the plane ticket. Exactly. Or the bus ticket. Exactly. Exactly. Because when Roe v. Wade was overturned, I remember my... DMs were flooded with yeah. thousands of women mm-hmm. begging me to help. And yeah. it's overwhelming. And mm-hmm. I can't even imagine I'm saying that in front of you, but it's it's overwhelming. And I remember people begging me like, I just need to afford a bus ticket so I can yeah. get out of this abortion desert yeah. that I live in in the South so I can get to a state. But they can't even, aff- you know what I mean? So it's like it's these people awful. are literally landlocked into a position that they don't want to be. And And here's the thing. Here's the thing is that you don't have to abandon your faith or deeply held beliefs to agree. The government shouldn't be telling her what to do. If she chooses, she'll talk to her priest, her pastor, her rabbi, her imam, but not the government telling you what to do. And that's what's so outrageous about it is a bunch of these guys up in these state capitals are writing these decisions because they somehow have decided that they're in a better 
position to tell you what's in your best interest than you are to know what's in your own best interest. It's outrageous. It's outrageous. I mean, daddy gang, to put it in um, our TikTok terms, um, I have seen girls on the street walk up to men and be like, do you know where a tampon goes? Right. Do you know how many tampons we use? Do you even know how, like, do you know what a X or Y or Z is of a part of our, and they don't know the answer. I was the. Do you know how the economy works? Do you know how inflation works? Do you know how uh, hurricane survivors survive when they're not getting help by their government that's in charge? Do you know how, you know, how critical it is if you vote in Kamala Harris? <laughs> I mean, okay. First vice president or president to ever in office uh, go to a reproductive health care clinic ever. Really? Yes. 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 I didn't know that, but I guess that makes sense. Mm -hmm. To your point. And yet the men are making the decisions and, about and our here's, And here's the other thing about this point, it, that it, it's about IVF treatments and access. It's about access to contraception, which is very much at risk with these folks. Um, it is about, back to the point about reproductive health clinics. You know what those clinics also do? They do PAPs. They do breast cancer screenings. They do HIV testing. And they're having to close in many places with these bans. So think about the fact that for anyone who has gone to one of these clinics, you understand that it is sometimes the most trusted place where people receive that kind of health care because they walk into those places that are generally staffed by people who, ex who create a safe place for people to come in without judgment. So anyone seeking any kind of reproductive health care and, and wanting to go to a place where they feel safe and without judgment, these clinics have often been the place that people can go. And many of them are having to close because of these laws. I was raised Catholic mm -hmm. and abortion is a sin. Mm -hmm. And when I put out that episode, I had a lot of women reach out to me saying like, wow, I, I you know, live in the South and I never thought about it that way. Like maybe I am pro-choice because I won't get an abortion because of yeah, my religion, right. but why should we control what someone else wants and that's to do? Exa and you know what's interesting, Alex, to your point, what I'm finding as I travel, people who before two years ago, before Roe v. Wade was, was overturned, people who felt very... The chick who's interviewing Kamala Harris, I don't know if she realizes like she's voting in her demise. Uh, shout out to Coach Greg Adams uh, for really highlighting that point. But I just want to reiterate that really quickly. Like, it, it's just baffling to me. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's just baffling to me. Like, you know, you're voting in, in your demise. You're voting in like three times the struggle. You're voting in like your own, you know, you know, uh, financial sabotage. Uh, your own, you know, you're downgrading the quality of your life voting for Kamala Harris. You're like sabotaging your financial future. And that's kind of how, you know, I'm just baffled. You're also like completely anti-God being a Democrat. Um, on top of that, uh, socialism, communism, the list goes on. There, there's a plethora of things you can say. All right. And comment down below. What, what, are, what are people voting in when they are voting for Kamala Harris? Comment down below. Okay. I'm sure you guys can come up with a much more uh, detailed list than, I'm, than I could come up with right here thinking in this moment on the spot. But um, yeah, let me know what you guys think down below. Okay. Uh, give, give a list of what, what do you think people are voting in when they're voting Kamala Harris? Okay. I'm, I'm curious on what you guys have to say. Uh, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share these videos if you have not. We're going to continue on with this clip. It's strong about that they are anti-abortion, anti-abortion, are now seeing what's happening and saying, hmm, I didn't intend for all this to happen. And I think that's also why in state after state, so-called red states and so-called blue states, when this issue has been on the ballot, the American people are voting for freedom because ultimately it's about, look, this is not about imposing my thoughts on you in terms of what you do with your life or your body. It's, it's actually quite the opposite. It's saying the government shouldn't be telling people what to do. Hi, Daddy Gang. Thank you so much for watching this video. Keep in mind that. All right. Welp. That was empowering. Uh, 
Oh my gosh. What has the world come to? Send it. Send a comment. <laughs> Send it. Anyways, back to Trump War Room. On the left, Kamala Harris recording There's nothing here. Word. Kamala Harris recording an interview on the X podcast, okay? Call her daddy. On the right, hurricane victims pleading with their government to help after losing their loved ones, their homes, and their livelihoods. All right, nothing about this is funny. I'm not laughing at any of that stuff. I was actually just disappointed. The fact that, you know, she's even running for president. There's a possibility that she could even get into the White House and actually be the president. Um, you know, God forbid, of course. But, yeah, she's still running. We still have to win. All right, so, yeah, it's, it's really Eight days, personal. nine days post her. Hey, I muted these. I'm, I muted these guys. People have lost everything. No disrespect to them, but, yeah. Um... Yeah, it's it's just it's just disappointing. You know, on top of that, I'm thinking about, you know, the future generations. This is who they have to look up to. Like Kamala Harris is not an excellent role model. I'm not saying Trump is perfect at all. Um I'm just it, it's really disappointing though for for the people that want to start families and all that kind of stuff, you know, whoever's like, you know, cares about extending their last name or or family or uh, having grandbabies or having cousins for their kids or whatever the case may be, you know, good freaking luck. I mean, I, you know, I'm a parent myself, but you know, and when I look at these these policies and I look at these casual conversations, do do do, we're just having a casual conversation about sabotaging children and deleting kids and all that kind of stuff on a regular Tuesday. <laughs> now, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's Tuesday. That was just me, me just talking, but um. Yeah, it's it's just diabolical. I, I'm just blown away. And then we have so many bigger issues. We have so many greater issues at stake here. OK, there are so many more important things we we need to be talking about. OK, and she's just. I mean, we will get to that when we get to it. And meanwhile, people are just losing their lives. And it's just wild to me. I. What do you guys think about this? What do you how do you guys feel about this? You know, I, I know I always say that, but I, I always want to get, you know, your opinion as well. I want to see how do you guys feel about this situation? How do you guys feel about the Call Her Daddy podcast and Kamala Harris on an ex podcast? Well, well, it's an ex podcast doing an interview. What is it? I was about to say it's an ex interview. I, I don't know. I'm I'm lost at that one. But what I do know is this. She does an interview and they talk about completely pointless topics compared to the topics that are like super important like FEMA only dishing out $750 per family that's ridiculous like who is that going to help okay and we're in inflation that's a straight slap in the American people's face all right and, and you're looking at the immigrants live your life that's 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 how that strikes me you know, they're getting new houses, they're getting new cars, they're getting five-star um, uh, apartments and hotels and all this other kind of stuff. A punishment to them is a tap on the wrist to a four-star hotel. And uh, meanwhile, they're able to delete people and run um, and just, you know, turn New York into uh, Gotham. And it's just a mess. And we're out here struggling, still getting up for work every day, doing what we got to do to put food on the table for our own. And, uh, you know, life is has become increasingly difficult under this nonsense admini administration, this pro nonsense administration. You know, I just find it, you know, disgusting, um, inconsiderate, um, just just horrendous, actually. And uh, that's that. But I digress from this topic right here. Um, I just want to know what you guys have to say about this. How do you guys feel and what do you guys think about this situation and um, everything with this? Comment down below. As always, shout out to each and every single one of you guys. I appreciate each and every single one of you guys. You guys are awesome. You guys are the bomb.com. Shout out to the King Squad, the King Squad family, the King Squad elites. You guys are awesome. Don't let anybody, and I mean anybody, tell you any different. And have a great and awesome and prosperous day. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.